Today, we'll be looking at two competing compact cars, the Honda Civic and the Toyota Corolla. Both are strong competitors in the same league, and it's no surprise that it's a tough choice. So, jump in with me as we compare each car's evolution in technology and style over the decades. We'll also see which model years are the best to buy and which ones to avoid if you're shopping for a pre-owned model. And stay tuned so that you can comment and share your opinion afterwards. It all started back in the early 1970s. It was a time of bell bottoms, roller skates, and Carol King. And then the oil crisis started, and America saw new EPA emission standards. This shifted the American consumer demand to fuel-efficient cars. It was in this very climate that Honda debuted the Civic, 1973. It was a subcompact car, initially offered as a three-door hatchback and sedan. It was small, efficient, humble. The market was ripe for a car like that, and Honda sold almost 33,000 Civics in its first year. Meanwhile, that same year, Toyota sold almost 117,000 Corollas, almost three and a half times more than Honda. That's because the Toyota Corolla had already entered the U.S. market several years prior. In fact, the Corolla was already in its second generation. A year later, Toyota introduced the third generation Corolla. It came in five different trims, ranging from a two-door hardtop to a five-door wagon. At that time, most car makers were fitting exhaust catalytic supply with tighter emission standards. But Honda found a better way to address it. In 1975, Honda started equipping the Civic with the compound vortex controlled combustion engine. The CVCC engine delivered cleaner and more complete combustion that met the new standards without requiring a catalytic converter. In fact, the EPA ranked the Honda Civic as number one in their list of most fuel efficient cars. You can see the impact the CVCC CVCC engine head because that year Civic sales jumped more than double compared to the previous year. Now it was the early 1980s and America would see mullets, neons, and the second generation Civic. This generation Civic are larger and new body styles included the four-door sedan, a special fuel economy trim to boost gas mileage, and a Sport S trim, which was a hint of the Civic SI model soon to come. During the same time, oil prices were skyrocketing. Toyota launched their fourth generation Corolla and included the lineup with a diesel engine. Overall, this generation had excellent fuel economy while carrying an upscale feel. The car was larger than the previous generation and came with a coil spring design that replaced the leaf spring rear suspension. Soon after, Civic's third generation arrived. It was bigger, sportier, had better fuel economy. New body styles got added, including the Civic CRX, a fastback coupe with two seats, the Civic SI hatchback, and the Civic Wagon, which became known as the Tall Boy, due to its extra height and larger rear window. During this generation, the popular D-Series engine was introduced, and also Honda started building the Civic on U.S. soil in Ohio. Meanwhile, Toyota started changing some of its Corolla models from rear-wheel drive to front-wheel drive. This generation was boxier with harder lines. Toyota also introduced the famous Corolla GTS with the double overhead cam engine producing a whopping 112 horsepower. This generation was considered one of the most popular, with 3.3 millions being produced worldwide. As the 80s were ending, America saw the fourth generation Civic. It came with sharp new looks, a new engine family, and larger wheelbase. One of the most important changes was the addition of double wishbone suspension for the front and rear, which gave the Civic much better handling. In the meantime, Toyota widened the Corolla by an inch, made the exterior more contemporary and stylish, and discontinued the coupe. By this time, all Corolla models were now front-wheel drive. The early 1990s brought the fifth generation Civic with a variable valve timing engine, also known as VTEC. America saw the two-door, four-seater Civic Coupe and the new Del Sol model. It was a two-seat coupe with a removable roof to give it an appearance similar to a convertible. Honda also focused on safety issues, adding passenger side airbags to all Civic models and optional anti-lock brakes. Meanwhile, during this time, the Toyota Corolla became bigger, heavier, sporty, and more aerodynamic than before. This is when the Corolla started growing from a subcompact to a compact category and becoming more like the car that we know today. This generation saw the Corolla come in six different engine variations, ranging from a 1.3 liter to a 2 liter diesel engine. The latter part of the 1990s saw the sixth generation Civic. This generation included a fully revised engine with 106 horsepower and low emissions ratings. 
Honda also introduced a natural gas-powered Civic. And America finally got its hand on the Civic Si, which had debuted in Japan three years earlier. The generation also saw the high-rev VTEC dual overhead cam 1.6 liter, also known as the popular 160 horsepower B16 engine. This all coincided with the eighth generation Corolla, which was now being built in California. Toyota wanted to prioritize safety and save energy. They reduced the car's weight by adding new impact absorption steering column, SRS airbags, and emergency locking seat belts. The only body style offered in the U.S. was a sedan powered by a 120 horsepower, 1.8 liter engine with a three or four speed automatic or a five speed manual. Then the new millennium started. Honda entered the era with the seventh generation Civic. It was a dramatic redesign. Honda replaced the double wishbone front suspension with McPherson struts and the car's interior became more spacious. This is the generation when the Civic grew from a subcompact to a compact car. America also saw the release of the first Civic Hybrid and a special edition package for both the sedan and coupe. During this time, Toyota was focusing on performance and quality. They launched the ninth generation Corolla, which was designed to appeal to a broader audience. It was based on the larger Corolla Altus with its 1.8 liter engine, but with more power, 130 horsepower. Toyota also debuted the sporty XRS version with 170 horsepower. The latter part of the 2000s saw the eighth generation Civic, which won many awards. The Civic became heavier as Honda started using different platforms for the coupe and sedan to give different driving dynamics. The first Civic Si sedan arrived and leather upholstery finally appeared as an option for the first time in the model's history. The natural gas GX also returned for 2006. It burned clean, but it was also slower, had less trunk space, it was heavier in weight and in price. Meanwhile, the 10th generation Corolla underwent a design overhaul both inside and out. The focus of this generation was technology, cabin space, and performance. Major visual changes included a new interior design, front grille, and bumpers. By 2012, Honda was on its ninth generation Civic. There were many tech upgrades and modern features that were uncommon in a compact car. The 2015 Honda Civic gave buyers more options with the new SE trim level, as well as impressive gas mileage, up to 41 miles per gallon on the highway and 31 miles per gallon in the city. This all overlapped with the 11th generation Corolla. Toyota modernized the Corolla, which was definitely more sleek and trendy. The largest change in the E170 model was the car size, its wheelbase being about four inches larger. Soon after, America saw the 10th generation Civic. This generation saw the first turbocharged Civic, including the performance model of the Civic Si with 205 horsepower, turbocharged 1.5 liter four cylinder. Also, the 306 horsepower turbocharged Civic Type R. The Civic R set a lap time record, making it the fastest front wheel drive car in Nürburgring. The 2021 Civic is the last of this generation, and America awaits to see the new generation of the 2022 model. Right now, the Toyota Corolla is in its 12th generation and is built on the Toyota new global architecture platform. This current generation saw the first Corolla hybrid. And did you know that the Toyota Corolla is the number one best-selling car in the world to date? Some 50 million units have been sold globally over its 55-year lifespan. Honda and Toyota both have high quality, reliability ratings and are known for longevity. So, if you're shopping for a pre-owned model, which ones are worth considering and which ones should you avoid? Let's start with a Honda Civic. If you're looking for a pre-owned Honda Civic, a few models worth considering include the 2014 model. That model received very few customer complaints and most were minor. The 2012 Civic also got a few complaints, mainly around seats being uncomfortable. Also, the 8th generation Civics, including the 06 to 11 models, are a good bet in general. It's worth noting that the Civic that gets stolen the most is the 1998, so that's an indication of its value. It's a classic, and fans love the durable hatches, while thieves value it for aftermarket parts. On the other hand, if it's high on the list for auto theft, maybe you should think of something else. So now, which Civic models are the least reliable? I recommend avoiding the 2001 Civic, and let me tell you why. First, that model had the most volume of customer complaints of all Civics. The most severe issue was transmission problems, anywhere from the transmission flipping, failing, to engage, jerking, or popping out of gear. Some drivers face loss of power while driving. And it's not just that. Honda issued some 27 recalls for that particular model. In fact, some 6 million units were recalled due to serious problem with the driver's side airbag, where sharp metal fragments would fly towards the driver when airbags deployed. Later, Honda also recalled 3 million Civics from that model due to similar issues with the passenger side airbags. 
The 2016 Civic has also seen some issues. There were reports that the air conditioning unit stopped working after 36,000 miles. Honda's unlimited warranty should cover the condenser repair, but some drivers reported it still malfunctioned even after several repairs. That model also had wires that were made from a soy-based coating, which evidently attracts rats and mice who like to chew on them, which leads to electrical issues. The cost to replace the damaged wires and cores can be eight to nine hundred dollars. As far as the Toyota Corolla is concerned, the ninth generation 2003 to 2008 Corolla are a good bet in terms of excellent gas mileage, 28 to 37 miles per gallon in the city, affordability, and overall reliability. If you're solely wanting the best fuel economy, then you want to consider the 11th generation, starting with the 2014 Corolla, which has the best gas mileage at 30 to 40 miles per gallon. So what Corolla models are the least reliable? The 2002 Corolla reportedly is the worst, and many deem it a clunker. The most common problem was the engine needing oil, which isn't dangerous per se, but it's an expensive problem to have. Fixing it cost an average about $2,600. Another complaint was that the airbags would fail to deploy. The 2009 Corolla received the most number of customer complaints. It had more severe issues than the 2002 model, including issues around speed control and steering. This led to 100 crashes, and Toyota issued a recall to address it. Another issue was that the airbags either didn't deploy or would explode if they deployed. Some 40 people were injured due to this. The 2014 Corolla also received reports of failed airbags, and there are many injuries and one death as a result, but no recalls have been issued yet. Most of the complaints for this model was that the radio stopped working even as low as 50,000 miles, and this can be expensive to fix, averaging about 1,300. Last year in the U.S., Honda sold over 261,000 Civics, and Toyota sold 237,000 Corollas. So you can see America's nearly split between these two. But now what do you think? Which is better, Toyota Corolla or Honda Civic? Comment below and share your opinion. If you like this episode, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks for your support.